freestyle that shit. Freestyle. All right. Well, um, to start off, for the people that haven't seen the trailer or really don't know what Trash Humpers is, tell us what a Trash Humper is. Well, first one second. I want to draw some dots. <laughs> this is basically one of my favorite things to do. I draw a dot and a line, and then it connects to another dot. And then I draw it here. So what? Sometimes I spend a couple of days doing this. It's a, it's a beautiful little dot maze. Mimic this way. What it does is it mimics um, the DNA. I was taught this uh, in uh, Bermuda by this guy named Haskell. Come on. And basically, what this does is it starts to work on you like DNA. Do you see how it's doing that? Yeah. And that's how we get our trash humper? Well, no. That's different, but wait. Just watch this. <laughs> then, what I like to start to do is write words that are connected to our DNA. Okay? So for instance, wait a second, let me finish this. If you, see now we're really starting to make this look like something. Do you notice basically uh, what animal this is starting to resemble? Well, not actually the form, but just the DNA. I don't. Okay, it's very, very close to a fox. Ah. This is what I was taught, at least. So, we'll start with this. Then, what I like to do is to draw words by each nucleus. So, for instance, we'll start out with the word, give me a, we'll say, fillet. Okay? And then we'll say um, the word strawberry. Okay, are you following me? I'm following you. Then what we, we'll go to something like uh, circus, war, mushroom, hate. Okay, so I think you're starting to pick up on this now. Then we go to Stephen, then ballet, okay, then we go to kill, then we go to Jew, then we go to spaz, then we go to uh, ring, prostitute, And prostitute takes us to lawn. Lawn takes us to sick. Sick takes us to bird. Bird takes us to Texas. Texas takes us to vomit. Vomit takes us to lady. Lady takes us to tramp. Okay, see now we're starting to fill it up, right? Mm -hmm. We only have a couple more. We have the word Lewis, Jive, um, let's see, are we finished? Uh, see. No, you're missing that one, that one, and that one. Okay, this one is definitely the word plate. And then this one will say toe. So basically, what you're seeing now is a dissection of the brain of a fox. But what I'm doing is I'm associating words to their nucleus. Okay. So this is a game that I often play with my daughter. So what you can do is you can make poems based on their DNA, right? So you'll say the lady, her name is Lewis, and she's sick, but she also hates birds who hang out in the circus. Mm. While she trips on mushrooms, <laughs> she spazzes out on Jews. 
she also spent a lot of time on the lawn during her prostitution jive. And her prostitution ring with Stephen, who's also a ballet dancer, and throws plates while he kills and fillets. So you can cross over when it ends? Yeah. You see, it's actually unlimited. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so listen, Steve does ballet with plates while he vomits, kills, and fillets. He eats his toes in Texas. He goes to war with the Strawberry Circus, and he often hates birds who do mushrooms. He's sick of the Jews, but he also spazzes out on the lawn with Lewis, who's a prostitute and jives to the Lady and the Tramp. That's incredible. <laughs> I, I uh, started getting into this with this guy from Bermuda, and basically I think that it's probably the future of a lot of things. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll sign the chalkboard, and you can have it. Okay? Got it. <laughs> That's incredible. It's a still shot right there. What do you, so what do you call that? What are you calling that piece? Anything? Well... The brain of a fox? Yeah, we could call it... Let's see, we could call it... DNA... DNA... Fox... DNA Fox Whore. Okay? Mm-hmm. Also, we could call it... AKA, AKA, we'll dedicate it to Easy E. AKA, Easy E, RIP, F U C K, <laughs> L A P D, P S. S O R R Y. That's brilliant. So, something like this probably could take a person very far in their life. I um, agree with you wholeheartedly. Do you like it? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's our trash number voice. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I, I forgot I shouldn't be doing that to breaking the illusion. <laughs> Alright. So you want to um, do your questions? Yeah, still got on some humpers. Real quick. Oh, so tell us what a trash humper is. Well, a trash humper is one of the a group of, um, of elderly humpers that likes to hump trash. They hang out in... Um, in back alleyways and under bridges and behind strip malls, they uh, peep in windows and they uh, basically they're vandals, but they're like uh, they transcend violence and vandalism and they turn it into just a kind of a, almost an art form. They um, they live in opposite ways and. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what they are. Where, where, uh, cause this is such a strange idea, and you know, you've had like most of your films are really it can be strange or weird. Where do you, you know? Last time I talked, we talked about Mr. Lonely, where that idea came from. What about trash numbers? Like, where did this? I mean, where did yeah. you get this idea to do this? Well, I originally because I walked my dog always in the alleyways behind my house in Tennessee, mm -hmm. and sometimes. Uh, I'll be walking and I'll see these lights and they're really dramatic and they're always casting a harsh glow, a beautifully harsh glow on these uh, trash bins. And um, the bins started to resemble human form to me. Um, and so I remember as a kid growing up there in that neighborhood, there was a, uh, about two or three blocks from where I lived, there was a, uh, it was like a makeshift retirement home um, that these, uh, I guess it was a couple used to run and they would charge you know like $19 a month to us like warehouse your uh, grandparents or someone that was related to you that you were trying to basically offload mm -hmm. and they would uh, stick them out in the basements and um, I remember they had a kind of a mandatory dressing code where they all the patients would wear uh, black turtlenecks 
and white nursing shoes. And for some odd reason, they would only ever listen to that band Herman's Hermits, and it was almost like a soundtrack to their life, uh, or at least whatever was going on yeah. with them. And so I, it was very often I would, uh, they were kind of like local, uh, you know, boogeyman characters. That us, us kids, we'd always try to run away, you know, or, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd joke about it and we'd see them. They would usually hang out behind the strip mall. They would sometimes sleep in a tire that they would turn into like a nest um, mm -hmm. and uh, sleep in it. And anyway, I would often see them staring. I had this cute next door neighbor, this teen, teenage next door neighbor, and I would a lot of times see the older guys staring at our window. Mm -hmm. So I just started to, uh, basically, I would dress up my friends in these really kind of crude masks late at night that resembled, you know, well, like, I don't say burn victims, but something like that. Something. Yeah. And we would go out and uh, I would use only like the crudest type of recording devices and the cheapest cameras and things and yeah. take photos and I liked the way they looked and it was kind of, uh, it was kind of, I don't know, uh, scary. And it reminded me, the texture reminded me of like VHS and so yeah. that's when I kind of came up with this idea. And you, you cut it on VHS decks, right? Yeah. Like how, how like irritating was that or difficult? No, it was good because when, because the movie was shot very much like the, like what you see, we would go out, we would sleep in the, out, out in the woods or behind like abandoned parking lots and stuff like that. We did it over the course of a couple of weeks and the characters, we would wake up and just start wandering around and we would go into people's houses and stuff and like, so it seemed when we were when editing the film on VHSs that uh, we were still in some ways uh, uh, acting. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That even that act was part of the. Yeah. Even I felt like I was slightly in character, just making it because I figured that the movie needed to work less like a movie and more like a found artifact more like just like a discarded VHS tape, you know, someone that had thrown it somewhere in a ditch or, uh, you know, it had been buried somewhere and put in a Ziploc bag and, and sent down the river. Um, and so when we were editing, we would usually edit, it was very hot, and we would take off our clothes, myself and the editor, and we would stack the, we, we didn't just use two, we used several, uh, and then we would kind of uh, do things to the VHSs, you know, we would glitch them and, uh, Usually, he was wearing like uh, speedos and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what made you want to go with using like you know, Rachel and the two other guys in masks versus like real old people? Well, because I thought that I thought it was more maybe slightly more horrifying. Yeah, you know, I thought for absolutely. me it, that it that it, it was kind of a what are you looking at question. It was something that was more. Uh, maybe slightly more of like an abstraction mm -hmm. that and then there was practical reasons just because you know getting an old person to uh, to do those things would be difficult just because it's so physical um, and you didn't, I didn't want anyone dying on the movie yeah. <laughs> and in the in the film and so uh, it just made more sense out of all the stuff that you did you make like a storyboard or y'all did y'all just like kind of go as you Oh, no, 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 there was no storyboard, there wasn't a script, there was just like a kind of loose idea of that every day was like its own chapter. It, again, there was nothing, it was like supposed to, it was a home movie, it was just a document of, it was like an ode to vandalism, it yeah. was like their, just the joy of destruction, it was the artistry of just blowing shit up, Yeah. it was just about kind of like documenting the explosions, and yeah. so there was never like right and there was never a wrong, it was just a truth yeah and so that was it you know the film was edited in the order that it was shot and a lot of it wasn't edited it was just or the editing was more just like picking a select moment yeah. there was never we weren't editing scenes in that way you know in the traditional way there was no close-ups and there yeah. was no coverage everything was only done one time and then randomly there was an in and out point yeah I like the idea you have where it's like it's just something that you stumble on the tape and you put it in, it's just like, just some, like, what, what happens and it's probably just, you know. Yeah. Do you, so do you perceive these characters as like, 
Sociopaths. Um, well, is, it like, I, is it bright over here? Oh no, there was just a. I was getting a bounce from a oh, okay. off the off the light, but it's okay. We okay. just go like that. Um, <laughs> what was that? What was that question? Do you do you see these characters as like sociopaths? Well, let's see. I mean, I guess it's hard. Could you say that you, is, that a sociopath is like admirable? Yeah. Because I find there's something admirable in their in, in their lifestyle you know what I mean there's, yeah. there's something like uh, uh, you know beautiful about their lifestyle yeah. at the same time I would say that they definitely veer into sociopathic ter territory it's more also just this idea that what's 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 good is bad and what's bad is good it's just yeah. reverse it's just like that speech that he the character says um, it's like I knew this guy in high, when I was in high school who was very, very smart. It was a Jewish guy that I knew. He was mm -hmm. actually a Jewish anarchist. And, um, you know, he used to blow up. He would, uh, he would always read those books, the anarchist cookbooks and stuff, and he would take these gels that he would make, and he would just explode the fuck out of the uh, toilet system in the city. It was just a hobby that he had. He would just walk around, and I remember he just exploded the hell out of a lot of public offices mm -hmm. you know um, by pouring this gel down and it would expand and the pipes would blow mm -hmm. and he was a very very brilliant man um, and I remember that he only ever copied and, and I never understood that like he only ever cheated on everything he cheated on every test you could possibly cheat on he cheated on tests where he knew the answers but he only cheated, and I said, he said, I asked him why, and he said, because he felt like it took the exact same amount of brain power to be a great cheater as it was to be a great scholar. Mm -hmm. And he wanted, and he felt like he would get the exact same grade as the great scholar because he was a great cheater. Yeah. It's interesting. And so he said at a very young age, he decided he wanted to commit his life to the art of cheating. And uh, I, w I was always moved by that. And in some ways, these characters have a similar philosophy. Yeah, that's really interesting. Well, cool. Uh, I guess, you know, to, to wrap this up, um, you, know, you made Trash Humpers, now you're promoting it. Do you have it? Sorry, dude. Where is it hitting you? No, sorry. Is that you know what happened? It was that red light. There was a glare coming from the red light. Oh, no, I, I don't mind it. It's okay. <laughs> uh, what do you got? What do you got next, man? What's on your plate now? Well, I'd like to do a uh, comedy um, that I wrote. Uh, um, hopefully in November. I've been spending a lot of time in Mexico filming these. Uh, they're called. Mexican ball do dogs, mm -hmm. and they're a horrible animal. They resemble a kind of a, almost an alien. They have no hair and black, fleshy skin that droops, and these massive teeth that just drop uh, milk everywhere they go. Mm -hmm. uh, and the milk smells putrid. It smells like uh, like torn up vomit or like uh, you know molded yeast that, uh, with some like lemon juice and uh, you know. Uh, I don't know what else. Maybe like gasoline drip dripped on it with a little bit of a like burnt hair smell. Yeah. And everywhere they go, they drop this uh, milk. And uh, so I've been spending a lot of time filming this, filming these uh, dogs because I want to show people uh, because what they do is they mate for life. And uh, but then towards the end of their life. They, I guess, when they get older and have kids, they, they fight to the death, mm -hmm. the husband and the wife, yeah. and leave one of the spouses dead. And so uh, I just wanted to bring that to the people. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it's going to be a great comedy. Well, no, that's two separate things. The, com oh, okay. the comedy is an actual movie, okay. what we would consider to be a film, something that would play in a multiplex and someone like... Celine Dion or what's her name? Uh, uh, Miley Cyrus. Exactly, Miley Cyrus might like or the or what are those brothers? The Jonas, the Jonas brothers. Yeah. That it's going to be something that's more geared towards them. 
<laughs> but the, do- the, the dog thing is more of like a public service. Okay. That's you, something I'm trying to get myself and into. And you want to do like a full length or like a, sh- like a short? It really just depends how exciting it is. I mean, I'm yeah. realistic. Yeah, awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to close out on this. <laughs>